Hello, and welcome to the final episode in Module 6 of the Anamorphic Cookbook. In this series of videos, I covered all the things that can go around your camera when filming with anamorphic lenses and give you either better results or a smoother experience on set. We have discussed the keystone effect, lens jackets, matte boxes, monitors, gimbals, and much more in the last five videos. So I highly recommend you catch up. This module is sponsored by SmallRig, whose products I've used extensively in the process of setting up this camera, and also add a ton of ease and customization to a gimbal build. Today we'll be looking at how to use DJI's Rangefinder LiDAR autofocus tool. First on the gimbal that we set up in the previous video, and afterwards by itself off the gimbal. This unlocks autofocus for pretty much any lens, anamorphic or not. This is also a really cool solution for par focal zooms since focusing distances don't change even though you're changing the focal length. This standalone process is still such a mystery that most folks believe you must be on the gimbal to benefit from the rangefinder. DJI's 3D focus system came out in late 2020, and it immediately dazzled everyone who used a manual focus lens. This little thing promised autofocus for everyone, as long as you could mount your lens on the RS2 gimbal. The 3D focus system was updated, renamed Rangefinder, in 2022, and that brought some sensible upgrades to the gear, such as being able to use this tool disconnected from the gimbal. You still need the gimbal for the setup process, though. But once you're set up, you can leave the gimbal behind and still get your autofocus on with up to three lenses at a time. Let's first look at what advantages you have from using the rangefinder connected to the RS3 Pro, as this setup offers a ton of functionalities. Then look at that mysterious process of using it as a standalone piece of gear. I have the DJI RS3 Pro, my camera is the Lumix S5 II, and the lens we're working with is the Lightway Suri Saturn 35mm, 1.6 times anamorphic. But you could technically use any lens or adapter setup, as long as it can be balanced on the gimbal. Before starting, make sure you're running the latest firmware on all parts. I use the DJI Assistant 2 for the Ronin series on my notebook to update the rangefinder, and the Ronin app on my phone connected to the gimbal to update all the other parts. First, I'll add the rangefinder to the hot shoe mount of the camera and secure the focus motor so it engage the lens's gears. We'll plug everything to the gimbal's ports following the symbols like a puzzle game and use this boxy cable that comes with the rangefinder to connect it to the gimbal. The stickers indicate what side goes where. The latest firmware for the rangefinder lets you skip the traditional lens setup for a lot of lenses. So in the phone app, click on the rangefinder window, then add lens and pick something from the lens list. I was very happy to see pretty much all new affordable anamorphics here with Viltrox, Sure, Laua, and Greatjoy slash Blazar. Using this process, you just need to set infinity and you're good it's much faster than the regular process. Still, let's walk through the regular process for all the potential adapters out there. With the gimbal on and everything powered, swipe to the left on the screen and click on the sliders on the bottom right corner. Then on lens profile. Now on C1, click the plus button. The very first step is to set our focal length. You can just slide on the screen to get to the ballpark, then fine tune the number. Here we go with the 35mm. Then press the back button on the top left of the screen. From here, hit calibrate motor, so the gimbal learns the lens's focus throw. You get a confirmation once done. A shortcut for that is to double press the FN button on the rangefinder. Now we shall focus on something one meter away from us. The good thing is there's a guide on the distance to subject on the screen. So when that shows one meter, adjust the focus wheel on the gimbal until the subject is sharp on camera, then click the button at the bottom of the gimbal screen. You get a prompt for step one complete. Now we set focus on something at four meters, repeating the process above. Then we're set up 
and the light on the back of the rangefinder will be solid green. I'm only calibrating a lens on slot 1, but you can repeat the process for slots 2 and 3, and all that info will be stored in the focus motor. Back to the LiDAR settings, we'll confirm the installation distance, which is the distance from the front of the LiDAR to the sensor indicator on the camera. We got the same number already in here, and this is more of a tool when you reposition the rangefinder instead of its default install position on the hot shoe. Now that the rangefinder is set up and working, you can take advantage of it through the RS3's control screen. Swiping from the left shows us what the rangefinder sees. We're again going to the sliders to adjust the settings. Here we can change the lens being used and all that stuff that we just did. We can also tweak the speed of the focus racking and turn active track on and off, as well as set its sensitivity. With this, the readings from the rangefinder will control the movement from the gimbal, tracking the subject as they move towards the edges of the frame. This is super useful for filming solo as I can still move around a bunch and not worry about repositioning the frame. When operating the gimbal, I can set different focus tracking modes by clicking the icon on the bottom left of the screen. By default, in wide mode, the gimbal will focus on the closest subject to camera. I can then use the dial at the front to switch between different subjects. After a switch, the rangefinder will continue to track the selected subject. In single point focus mode, you can draw a box around the subject you want to be kept in focus, and the gimbal will do the rest of the work as you and the subject move around. I got pretty successful results by just tapping my target on the screen in the middle of a shot. Here, if you want to engage active track again, you can just press the trigger and the box will turn green, signaling active track is doing its thing for framing, which I can still override by moving the joystick. Another cool feature when using an RSS camera control cable and select compatible cameras, like the Lumix S5 II I have here, is we can give control of the lens's autofocus motors to the gimbal. This way, the rangefinder provides the focus information to the camera and the motors on the lens keep the subject sharp, eliminating the need for an external focus motor. Something to keep in mind for all users of the rangefinder is LiDAR relies on invisible light to measure distances, meaning it can get pretty confused if things get in the way. If you have obstacles between you and your subject, the rangefinder is likely to act up and try to focus on the obstacles. You can override its tendency to refocus by holding down the record button while you cross your obstacles, then letting go once you're in the clear. The other thing that will mess up your results is atmosphere fog, dust, rain, and all that crap that adds texture will read as solid objects to the LiDAR and hurt your results. Nothing's perfect, right? Even though this functionality is outlined in DJI's video about setting up the rangefinder, it was incredibly frustrating to figure out the specifics to making it work. So let's go through the steps together. With the camera sitting next to the gimbal, I totally skipped all the balancing steps. The goal is just to set up the rangefinder, so power up the system and set the gimbal's motors to sleep. After repeating the setup process just like what we had done with the gimbal, either by manually calibrating it or by picking a lens from the list on the app, confirm autofocus is working as it should. If yes, it's time to power down the gimbal and unplug everything. This is where things get sketchy. The main reason folks fail here is because this system needs 7 to 16 volts of power delivered through USB-C. The standard USB-C voltage is 5 volts, so nothing works unless you're using a special cable. This orange DTAP to USB-C cable can output up to 15 volts on USB-C, and you will find a link below this video, but it's up to you to ensure that your power source doesn't fry the motor. Small rigs V-Lock batteries only deliver up to 14.8 volts through DTAP, so we will be all right. But be careful if you're using a different power source. The indicator light on the focus motor will turn solid red. On the port right next to it, we'll plug any regular USB-C cable from the gimbal package and connect the other end to the rangefinder. About 20 seconds later, the rangefinder will boot up and start blinking red. 
Use single taps on the FN button to navigate to the slot you calibrated your lens to, in our case, C1, and then double tap FN to calibrate the focus motor. Then the light on the rangefinder turns solid red. Since this is the lens that we programmed on C1, just tapping the autofocus manual focus button will make the light go green. You are good to go. Now let's talk a bit about the limitations of this process. You have very few slots for lenses. Three at a time is so little. With the latest firmware, changing what's in each slot is a much faster process as long as you're using lenses in DJI's library. We still have to use the gimbal for that though. It would be good as a full standalone thing, really. And just like my April Fool's autofocuser, the rangefinder on its own works best with centered frame subjects. When connected to the gimbal, we pick subjects, but without the gimbal's brain, this looks straight ahead. Still better than no autofocus. I wish this lack of control plus the calibration process could be addressed through the Ronin app. Although I can see that DJI would prefer to keep it connected to the gimbal to keep the ecosystem closed off. A few possibilities from using the rangefinder without the gimbal is we can get autofocus with beefier lenses than the gimbal's payload, such as most anamorphic cinema lenses or adapter setups. The other benefit I outlined earlier is being able to game the system and use parfocal zooms, since their focus marks are accurate regardless of the focal length. The app even gives you several options of parfocal zooms. Because I really wanted to explain this, let's look at how the system actually works. The rangefinder features two viewing ports. One of them is covered by intense magenta coatings, and the other one uh, looks like a plain camera. The magenta one is the actual LiDAR, which stands for light detection and ranging. And while you can't see a flashing with the naked eye, most cameras can see a glow. This thing is firing laser beams all over the place and getting the reflections back. With the information of how long they took to return, the system can confidently estimate distances. It's like a depth map. That gets thrown under the 2D image captured by the camera side. And so when you're selecting to track or focus on any given subject, the rangefinder is crossing references between tracking the 2D subject and the depth information from the LiDAR, then passing that on to the focus motor. In case you don't remember how accurate flange distances need to be, we're talking fractions of millimeters. For this system to be accurate, you must have a precise measurement of the distance between the rangefinder and your camera sensor. Otherwise, a few millimeters here can translate to an offset of several feet in the result. I'm very excited about using the rangefinder both on and off the gimbal to achieve autofocus with anamorphic lenses for smaller projects and to learn the limitations of the gear. I gotta say, this is much easier and more reliable than focusing by hand and doing all the work by myself on the field. What are your thoughts on gimbals, autofocus, and anamorphics? I'd love to hear your input in the comments below. Plus, since this is the last episode of the module, I'd appreciate your feedback on what worked out well and what I could do better for future modules. Thank you so much for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next module about going on set. Shoot the feathers, out.